Hi, my name is Nick Nadaf. I'm a specialized solutions architect with Microsoft Platform team. Today I'll be showing you how to develop a modern .NET serverless application. Let's get started. We're going to go through now the uh, serverless architecture. The first part I'm going to show you a use case of uh, serverless architecture in AWS. Then I'm going to show you a demo. Uh, which is the Cloud Flashcard application that I built using the serverless architecture. And then we're going to go through the code and uh, AWS configuration uh, services used in the Cloud Flashcard. So this is actually uh, one use case of how to build serverless architecture in AWS. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the back end. So here, is a, a one use case to build a serverless backend architecture in AWS. As you can see, the entry point for this backend or the architecture is using Amazon API Gateway to receive calls from your uh, client. Then Amazon API Gateway APIs will be calling uh, AWS Lambda functions to get the response uh, required. So AWS Lambda functions here where you put the code to handle your database calls, uh, uh, other services like uh, using uh, Amazon S3 or even using Amazon Elastic Cache to put some data in the cache to avoid hitting Amazon uh, DynamoDB over and over because that's gonna cost you more money and it's gonna make your application performance a little bit, not weak, but not as fast as when you're using the uh, Amazon Elastic Cache for the repeated data. So instead of hitting the database over and over, you are actually going to cache this data for a certain time and return it back to the call coming from Amazon API Gateway to make the performance better and uh, save uh, cost for your application. So here I'm showing you one client of this architecture is could be uh, uh, your mobile client, where you can build a mobile application to uh, call and consume your uh, backend by calling the Amazon API Gateway APIs that you built in the backend. The second client could be a, a static website hosted in Amazon S3 and distributed using uh, Amazon CloudFront. So that's just a simple uh, static uh, website where you can uh, call the, your APIs uh, using a JavaScript, and you're gonna get the same response that you're getting uh, from the uh, mobile client and from the third case that I'm gonna show you later. The third case is when you build actually web application. In our case here, I used AWS, uh, sorry, uh, uh, ASP.NET Core to build uh, a web application to consume and call our uh, Amazon API Gateway backend to get the data from uh, S3 and DynamoDB. So mainly, this is the common use case to build a serverless architecture. And I'm using .NET, so this architecture is for a .NET, serverless .NET solution to show how you build serverless uh, architecture using AWS and uh, ASP.NET Core or .NET Core. Second thing here, we're gonna uh, talk about and showing you a cloud flashcard, it's just a simple application to uh, manage flashcards. So you have uh, flashcards uh, grouped into topics. So user can create topics and create flashcards related to those topics. But before to start using the application, users need to sign up and sign in uh, uh, before you can start creating and you know managing your flashcard. So the application is built using uh, .NET Core 2.1 and I'm using AWS Cognito to sign up and sign in users and also using DynamoDB to store the data, mainly the topics and flashcards. And we're using AWS Lambda functions to create uh, those, uh, you know, uh, topics and flashcards and store them in, in, in DynamoDB, put them in the uh, Elastic Cache, and also maybe get some information from S3 if we are recording the flashcards uh, by voice. And uh, we're using Amazon API Gateway APIs to call 
the AWS Lambda function. So mainly the clients actually dealing only with your APIs hosted on uh, Amazon API Gateway. So we have here in this application two tables, topic and card in DynamoDB, six Lambda functions, six API Gateways APIs, and one Cognito user pool. So here's the uh, architecture of the uh, our demo, Cloud Flash Card. I have the browser calling ASP.NET Core hosted on uh, EC2 instances. I can make this architecture highly scalable, highly available by putting on two different AZ and uh, using uh, auto scaling group and uh, uh, elastic load balancer, calling the Amazon API gateway and AWS Lambda functions and Amazon DynamoDB with the use of uh, Amazon Elastic Cache. Okay, I'm just gonna show you now, uh, you know, how the application works. So I put this in uh, dev.cloudflashcard.com as a demo. I have, this is the homepage of the application. So I need first to sign in. Uh, I already signed up using my Amazon email address. So here, the uh, page of my user. So now I signed in using, uh, you know, uh, AWS Cognito. Just gonna go to dashboard. Here I'm gonna see list of topics that I created. So I have here four topics. I can create a new topic by just going to this screen. I'm gonna call it new topic two. And uh, as I said before, this application is based on ASP.NET Core and actually calling the Amazon API Gateway APIs. So you see here I have this topic. If I wanna go for any topic and click on it, I'm gonna go to the screen where I can see uh, the properties of this topic, like the create date, update date, and I can check the cards related to this topic. So if I click on the view cards, it's gonna take me now to screen where I'm gonna be able to see cards related to this topic. This topic has no cards, so I can go to Lambda topic, and here I see list of cards. I can create new cards just to put some information for the, for the demo. And now I'm creating new cards related to this topic. So if I go back and check Lambda and go to the view cards, I'm gonna see this topic because the, this screen actually is gonna be sorting topics the uh, latest one is gonna be the first one shown on the screen. So this is just a quick demo on how to use the application. Now, later I'm gonna show you how I built this application using Visual Studio and AWS services. So now, just to show you how I built this application, first we're gonna go to AWS console and uh, start you know, showing you uh, all services that are part of this demo. So first, I'm gonna go to Cognito. To show you the user pool that I used to uh, handle the sign-in, sign-up process. Just different region. So here, Cloud Flash Card. This is a user pool where I have the pool ID here and I have the configuration. This is one of the users, you know, that I used uh, before when I show you demo. So actually, this is the user ID that I'm using to connect the topics with the user ID in DynamoDB table. We'll, show, we'll, we'll see this later. But this is just a simple user pool where I can handle all the authentication and the sign up of this application demo. Second thing, we're gonna go to to uh, the Amazon API Gateway to show you the interface of this application. Here you can see Cloud Flashcard API. And this is the list of uh, resources and each one has its own uh, method. So I'm gonna go over all of them just quickly. 
So this the first function is uh, first API used to get the topics for the signed in user. So I'm taking the user ID, the one I showed you before, uh, the user ID incognito, to call the uh, this uh, API. So it's only I have only here one get method that's going to be showing you the workflow of this method where I have the uh, request the integration request and this is the lambda function connected or supporting this API and then the response so if I click on the method request I'm going to show you here I'm using the user ID uh, as a part of the query string uh, I need to use to pass the user ID uh, to this method and la uh, uh, later it's going to be actually used by the AWS lambda function same thing here for the topic. Here I have two uh, methods, get and post. Also, uh, if I go to the get, I'm going to see the same workflow where I have the request. I have here the integration. In this section, actually, where I'm connecting this API with the Lambda function. So as you can see on the screen, I selected uh, integration type as a Lambda function. And here the Lambda function you know, code that I'm going to need to use when this API is called. Same thing for the rest. So I have here four resources, the cards, the topic cards, topics, and user topics. And I'm using get post, sometimes get, in order to support the APIs. So this is part of the API. So if you wanna go and see the Lambda function supported or supporting this API, here's the list of uh, six Lambda functions except for this one that is used for something else, I have here six lambda function. So if I get this get topics per user, this actually lambda function is called by the uh, get user or user topics uh, API. Here actually I'm using the trigger as a, a API gateway API and the information uh, about this Lambda function. Later, I'm going to show you the code in Visual Studio, how we built this Lambda function. So here I have the six um, Lambda functions supporting the six API used by your client. So now I'm just going to go to DynamoDB to list the tables that are supporting this application. Here, I, as I said before, I have two tables, one for the topic, one for the card. The topic is actually uh, here. I'm using the user ID. This user ID, the same one that I showed you before, it's the Cognito user ID. That's how I'm connecting topics with users. So once the user is signed in, then uh, the system will take his user ID and use it to store the topics and later, User, the topics ID used to uh, group the flashcards. So this is the first table is showing user ID and I have here the topic ID and the name. If I go to the cards, actually the cards are related to topic. So I see here the topic ID is connected with the card ID and the content. So indirectly, the flashcards or the cards here related to a specific user. So here I have two tables to support the application. Uh, those tables are actually managed by the AWS Lambda functions that I showed you before. Same thing, Lambda function is going to be using Elastic Cache or any other AWS service to add this to the cache or maybe save files in S3 or maybe call uh, SQS queue to send message to another system. So mainly, this is the part of AWS configuration of this demo. Here's the list of all APIs in the Amazon API Gateway screen. But after I am done with the APIs, um, I'm ready, they are all tested, and now I need to deploy uh, the stage or deploy those functions to get the URL that I'm gonna be using by the clients, like mobile application or ASP.NET core MVC client or the static website using JavaScript. So once I'm done, I can just select the top of the my API and I go and I have I can just call deploy API. Once I'm done here, 
I'm just going to be able to see the, my deployment. So every time I'm changing anything in the uh, Amazon API Gateway APIs, configuration, uh, I'm adding new resources, I'm adding new methods, I need to create a new build or a new stage. And this stage actually you can see here the invoke URL. That's the base URL that I'm going to be using by my client. One is the ASP.NET Core MVC application. And then when I'm using this URL, where actually I'm going to be adding resources here to that URL and the required parameters in order to make a successful call to the API. Now, open Visual Studio, and I'm going to show you the projects that I use to build this solution. I, you can see here more projects, like five, but mainly the two projects are used in this demo. The first one is the serverless, and the second one is the uh, web application. So the serverless is the part that, you know, covering the AWS Lambda functions. I have here two uh, files, one to, uh, to support or to build the topic functions, and the second one to support the flashcards uh, functions. So I'm going to start with the uh, topic function. As we saw in the AWS Lambda function console, I have six Lambda functions, two, three for topics and three for flashcards. So this source code or this file contains the functions related to topic. As you can see, the first one here, actually, I'm getting the topics per user ID. So I'm getting a API gateway proxy request. Here I'm checking the input. So the user ID is a required parameter to be as an input for this method. As I showed you before in the console, I'm looking for user ID as an input. And here in Lambda function, I'm going to check to see if the query strings contain this, this uh, parameter. So the user ID, if it's not part of the query string, I'm going to return bad request uh, message to user explaining that missing required parameter and here in this variable I'm putting what's the parameter. And later, I'm actually uh, calling uh, uh, Lambda or uh, sorry, calling a DynamoDB using the DynamoDB uh, client where I can query the table, which is the topic table using the user ID in order to get list of all topics related to this, to this user. The second method here is to get the topic. So in this case, I'm actually getting the information for specific topic. So I need the topic ID to be part of the uh, query string. So uh, same thing, I'm validating the input here to make sure the topic ID is part of the input. If not, then this request is bad and I'm sending bad request response. Second or next part is actually I'm calling the DynamoDB using DynamoDB client where I need to query the table and get this specific topic based on the topic ID, return it back to the uh, caller, which is the API Gateway API. I'm using some uh, uh, logs here where I just need to make sure when I'm debugging the application bef before I start, you know, uh, testing the whole application, I need to make sure all the Lambda functions are working properly. That's why I'm putting some lines here where I need to just add some logs while the function is actually working. The third method is to create topic. This is actually the post uh, from the uh, API Gateway API. Same thing, I need here to pass the user ID and I need to make sure, not only user ID pass as a parameter, I need to make sure that the name of the topic also pass because when I create a new topic, I need the user ID and I need the name of this topic. So here in, in the screen, you see two validation happening here, two validations. The first one is to validate the user ID and the second uh, one is the topic name. Then once I'm done, I can just call the DynamoDB client to create a new item in the database to, uh, using the user ID 
and the topic name and I'm creating the topic ID and the other stuff. So this is for the uh, functions used to support the topic APIs. The same thing I can show you can be used for the card. So here it's the same, same idea, just I'm doing something different where I'm actually calling the flashcard per topic. So I'm gonna need the topic ID. Same thing, I'm doing the validation, calling DynamoDB, getting the response, send it back. The second one is actually when I'm trying to check specific flashcard. So I need the flashcard ID as an input, and then I'm gonna return back to the API, uh, the uh, flashcard information. The last method is when I create a new flashcard. Here I need to validate the same thing, the input, where I need the topic ID because every flashcard is related to specific topic. And I need also to make sure the user ID is passed as part of the DynamoDB design. And I need the content because if I'm creating a flashcard without content, then it doesn't make sense. I need to make sure it's, it's, uh, it's, its contact is ready, the user ID and the topic ID. So mainly those uh, two files contain all the AWS Lambda functions that I'm using to support the back end of this application. Here, I can just, you know, right click and publish uh, for the first time or every time I change my code, publish those methods or functions to AWS Lambda. So every time I update the code, I need to repeat this just to make sure I'm putting in AWS Lambda the latest version. In this application, there is a file here I'm using to create the uh, Lambda functions, which is like a cloud formation template. Uh, the system will gonna, is gonna be using this template file to create the first time or every time you update your code to create and update the Lambda functions in AWS Lambda. So mainly, this is the code for uh, the um, AWS Lambda function supporting uh, the back end of the system. Now, I'm gonna show you the uh, code uh, related to the uh, ASP.NET Core MVC application. So, if we go now, here, actually, I'm just calling the uh, Amazon API Gateway APIs. It's like I'm calling any other uh, RESTful or any other web APIs. I have here a uh, code to handle this, but first I need to make sure that I'm calling uh, Cognito to sign in the user before I can show the data related to this user. So first of all, I need to show you the sign-in controller. Sign-in controller here is just, you know, calling a service that I built within this application or this project to deal with Cognito. So I'm receiving the uh, email and password and then I'm calling the uh, Cognito service as part of my ASP.NET Core application. This Cognito service is used to handle any work with Cognito. One of them is to get the user or validate the user. So I'm gonna send uh, a user email and uh, password and make sure this user is already part of the system and authenticated properly before I move to the authenticated controllers where I need to start showing the topics and flashcard related to this user. So the main controller here is the one related to dashboard. Here where I actually put the first screen that I showed you before, list of all topics for the user. So this is, I have it, the Git Topics list, as you can see on the screen. So if I go to data service, I'm using to handle and manage the API gateways. So this is actually the uh, Git Topic uh, list. I'm getting user ID as an input, and then I'm calling uh, the uh, Amazon uh, API gateway and then I'm sending user ID with the specific resource, which is the user topics, as I showed you before. I'm giving this user ID as an input, and uh, if the uh, operation or the call uh, is uh, you know, successfully done, 
I'm going to receive the information and data, I'm trying now to deserialize the object to get list of topics, and then once the topics uh, ready, I'm going to you know send it to my view where I can you know see uh, the list of topics related to the user. Showing now the view. If we go to dashboard. I'm going to the view. So here, where you see the first time after you log in, the dashboard is a list of all topics related to this user. Of course, here, all the methods or the uh, actions related to dashboard controller are represented by views as part of the project here. dashboard you see here list of all views this is where I see the view cards a new topic a new cards uh, edit topic and also cards by topic so mainly this is the presentation layer of this demo it's just based on ASP.NET Core 2.1 where I'm calling the uh, Amazon API gateway APIs to retrieve data and display it and also I'm using uh, Cognito to sign in user to make sure the user is already authenticated before start calling a secured API related to this application. So, in this video, you learned how to develop a modern .NET serverless application. I hope you can take advantage of it, and thank you for watching.